Welcome back, everybody, to Rest Stop Rambles, episode two. Not Rambles. Road Stop Rambles, which we fucked up and couldn't even remember our own name, but we're here talking Rest Stop Rambles. My name is Zach. My name is Tyler. And we're just two best friends who ramble on about fucking everything. Like last week, we were just, or not last week, but last month, we were supposed to just talk about Arizona. <laughs> yeah. And we ended up talking about the paranormal, aliens, uh, UFOs, Bigfoot. Like, what would we do if we found Bigfoot? Yeah. And uh, Taco Paisa. Yes. Our favorite place in Arizona, which everyone on TikTok roasted us because we could not remember the cross streets. Understand we are doing this on the spot. We fuck up. That's okay. Right, Tyler? Yeah. At least you know it's like organic and it's not yeah, like yeah. all pre-made. It's just like we're doing this right off the rim. Right off the rim. Majority like, of the time. Unless we really have to research a topic. Which you were doing a lot of research and then something came out. And we had to talk yeah. about that instead, which I don't know if you want to introduce what we're going to be talking about today. Oh, we're just going to, I mean, most people already probably know the history, but we just want to talk about the Drake and Kendrick beef. Yeah. Because it's just a topic that sounds like fun yeah. to which, talk about. Yeah, which I know we're going to get into later when we get into the main topic, but I want to ask you one thing, okay? Okay. Before this rivalry, Drake or Kendrick, which one have you been more of a fan of? Always been Kendrick. Kendrick? Okay. Um, yeah, that's just like me personal. That's just my personal taste. Yeah. Do I think Drake's a bad artist? No, I don't think he's a bad artist. I, he has, I mean, I think lately he has been uh, personally I, I, for me. I, I don't really keep in touch with Drake like yeah. that because I just don't listen to it. But to deny the fact that he has not produced some amazing songs and albums. Oh, geez. Oh, yeah. He, he has. He's, show, he's shown it. I think he peaked so. on Take Care personally. Okay. And then I think Kendrick, like every album he's put out or everything that he's ever been on has always been great. Yeah. Like uh, one thing that really like, I've always liked Kendrick, but the thing that like showed me a lot is what he did with the Black Panther album oh, and how okay. he like mixed the music and like uh, all the stars, just like how it tied perfectly into that movie. Mm. That wasn't something that we had been seeing a lot where like an artist does an entire album for one movie. Yeah. And I thought what he did there was fantastic. But how we want to start these is kind of like, since we're called the Rest Stop Rambles, maybe you're coming through Arizona, maybe you live in Arizona. We want to kind of talk about and shout out some places in Arizona that we really fancy and really like, yeah. um, because this is where the podcast takes place. This is where we are live in. So Tyler, w kick us off. If people were coming on a road trip or they live in Arizona, what's like one place that you would recommend? It could be a food place. It could be something entertainment to do, or just like in general, Drinks, coffee, throw it out there, man. Okay. I mean, we mentioned Tacos El Peso last yeah. time. Um, easy one. I mean, probably a lot of also like a destination place that if you're coming to Arizona, you're probably checking it out already and see what's down there. Uh, downtown Gilbert. Yeah. A place that I used to work at years ago. Um, Liberty Market. Definitely worth. Uh, yeah. It's definitely a great worth place. It. What's like your favorite thing to get there, I guess? Oh man, that's hard because they do breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's mm -hmm. also a nice spot. Or nice thing about it, they do breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's always really good. It's always freshly made. Everything's made in house. So, well, what's your go-to? Like you, you, okay, you're gonna so go I'm there going today there for breakfast. Yeah, yeah. I would do. They have a sweet potato chorizo hash. Yeah, if I'm, I'm remember that correctly, but I don't uh -huh. get sweet potatoes. I do mm -hmm. regular potatoes because I don't yeah, like sweet yeah. potatoes. Um, I love chorizo and the chorizo there is really good. It's not pork or no. even beef. Oh. I thought it was. It's actually chicken. That's surprising. Yeah. You would never really notice if you just had mm -hmm. it. Okay. Um, if I'm going for lunch. Yeah. Oh, that's a tough one. Um, First thing on top of your head. It's I'm going with two different ones. Okay. The first one would be the wood fire turkey. Okay. It has poblano peppers. Mm -hmm. a habanero aioli okay i like also throwing bacon on there and then okay. and then like shaved turkey breasts okay and then they throw in the wood fire oven and it just yeah it's so good okay i dig that or now. okay the shaved roast beef sandwich all right and what about for dinner could either of those also be for dinner or yeah you could i believe that also chance over to dinner but they also have different things on the dinner menu if it's the weekend so that sometimes mm -hmm. they Every weekend they do a weekend special, mm -hmm. and that is an entree 
um, like just an appetizer yeah. and a dessert. And it always changes every weekend. Depending on what it is, I'll go with like the weekend special. But if not, the flat iron steak is so good. Their chimichurri sauce is f- phenomenal. Phenomenal. Okay, so Liberty Market you got in downtown Gilbert. I'll go ahead and uh, shout out a place uh, that we just went to, uh, Pecan Entertainment out in Santan. Uh, oh. Valley, Queen Creek. We took our closest friend, Curtis, who is getting married. By the time this is going up, it'll be a couple days before his wedding. Nice. Uh, so shout out to Curtis and Allie. They, well, yeah, maybe by the time they listen to this, because I know Curtis listens to this, uh, he'll have been married. So congrats, yeah, congrats. congrats. congrats uh, we're excited. <laughs> but uh, we went to Pecan Entertainment and Santan Flats, which I want to fucking shout the shit out of. So I want to talk about both of those real fast. So you Pecan Entertainment. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. So Pecan Entertainment is like basically like a whole outdoors, indoors entertainment facility. And it's got like a rope gymnastics thing that we definitely yeah, did not go outside. do. It a looks putting crazy. green. They're putting in a golf cart. But the reason I chose this place is because Axe there's throwing yeah, karaoke, yeah, which I'm going to talk about both of those, which then was fun. Codwell's for some really awesome barbecue, but we'll talk about that. In a yeah. Different. But the one thing I want to shout out is like the reason I picked this place is because Curtis asked me for a bachelor party where it's just his friends hanging out. Well, what's some stuff that we've done? We just fuck around and do weird shit like that and yeah. just go about no matter what our age is. And also he lives in the middle of fucking nowhere. So you got to choose what's close. And it was 10 minutes away from his house. It was a perfect place to go to. Took him there and we did karaoke, which was a lot of fun. Um, I'm going to play a little clip right here. And for sorry you? for everyone's ears. Yes, I'm going <laughs> to edit it in. So let's play it right now. It's no one else, no one else can speak the words of yours. That was uh that was us, so I'm sure we just lost some viewers, but it's okay. Oh, it's okay. I don't, or are they just like locked in even more? Locked in even more with our beautiful voices. I don't even know what song I picked yet. When I'm editing, I'll choose. Because I have all the video clips. So oh, geez. as for that, um I also want to shout out the axe throwing. I thought that was really cool. Like the uh how they project like uh, uh something that, on it. Actually that was actually really really cool i'd go do that again like I absolutely would. like be. most axe throwing is just you you throw it and that's it but like it well it's was, like spray like most places i feel like it's just spray paint yeah and it's just like a target this was a projection and they had darts yeah the but dart, you're which doing was fun axe yeah. throwing darts is so yeah. much better which i've never gone so axe throwing first and it was a lot of blast so yes. i love that shout out to pecan entertainment Second off, Santan Flats. Okay, so you, I asked you, where should we go to dinner? And you said Santan Flats. Let's do it. It's easy. And I'm surprised no one in the whole group has been there, considering. Well, I think Curtis had been there. Had he? Yeah, he had oh, been okay, there okay, once, okay, but okay. that was about it. I I didn't know what to expect going. I knew it would be good because you're, you're a man of culture. You understand. But Santan Flats is like, I'm like addicted now. I told my wife that like uh, after the week of the wedding, yeah. we're going back there. We're, we're already planning a date night to go there. Oh, really? And uh, I'm told her I'm, I'm going to get the burger. I'm going to get the cheese curds again, and she'll probably get the ribs. And Their flat iron steak there is really good yeah, as well. Yeah, the flat iron steak looked good. Everything really good. there looked so good. The drinks, $6 yeah, yeah, for a happy hour. That That is, or even five, like depending if you're paying yeah. cash, that is insane to me which is also a huge thing if you do go to santan flats bring cash because you can definitely yeah it's even cheaper yeah, it's a it's and the food the void tax dude i shit you not like i spent 55 dollars for me and curtis because i bought his meal that that's a perfect price for what we both got for that burger and then the cheese curd because i just bought the cheese curds on the side because i had to try them yeah incredible in fucking incredible i i loved it so much dude I, yeah, I, I'm addicted. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Santan. So I'm shout out to that place. Um, I will be coming back there as much as possible. In fact, I'm going to move right next to it. I'm going to build a fort. Oh, you're okay. Right next to it. Mm, so it's going to be like your weekend house. Yeah. Okay. And I hope Bigfoot comes. Russian you know? Bigfoot. Yeah. Yeah. The guy that we talked about last podcast. Yeah. What do you think? You think he'd live there with me? Um, or not. On the cooler months, you might have to shave him. He I don't want really, to. He might, but it's like really hot for him. I don't care. All hair. I don't care. He needs to learn to do that shit by himself. You know. But what? He, like his back. I'm not touching it. But you're gonna have to help him. He can find a wife. Are you? Are you gonna help him? I'll find a wife. You kidnapped him. Yeah, that's fine. So you're gonna have to. 
kidnap his wife too. If I'm no, 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 no. He doesn't have a wife. I gotta find him one. Yeah, I know. Put him on Tinder. Oh. Yeah. So you gotta at least people help are him in the look freaks good. like that. No, man. Look, people are into good. that Come stuff, on. dude. If people are like like furries, people there, there's okay. always someone out there that likes something. You know, someone's gonna want him. You know, a man of culture. That's what he is. I call you a man of culture. This man's also a man of culture. He knows Russian. The government's going to at least want him. And then when he goes and I sell him to the government, he will meet a lady there who will want to save him and bail him out. You ever seen Shape of Water? Yeah. Okay, so you know like that whole storyline? Yeah. Yeah, imagine this story, okay? Okay. Instead of calling it the Shape of Water, it's called the Fur of Arizona. Would you go watch it? You should pitch that. To Death Horo, though, right? Yeah. You, you like should. as a semi-sequel to... Sp- you should write a script. Okay. And pitch it. Okay. But I want you to play Bigfoot. Yeah, I need I, I need you to start figuring out Russian right now. I will make a deal with you. <laughs> <laughs> What's the deal? If you make the script and you pitch it to Del Toro <laughs> and he picks it up... <laughs> I will play Bigfoot. Okay. Prosthetics and, and all. Prosthetics and all. Yeah. Learn fluent Russian. Okay. And I will only ask for 10%. Of what the movie makes. Of what the movie makes. So negative 5 million. Because <laughs> it's not making money. Oh, it ain't making money. Del Toro is going to look at the script and be like, is this, remember like the scary movie days? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That, that's basically, it'll be a parody of Shape of Water. The Fur of Arizona. I think this could make money. Santan Flats, will you please sponsor us? <laughs> all I need is about $5,000, and I, we will make it all at your location. The whole movie. The, the whole, whole movie. The whole movie. I'll figure it out. I'll figure out how to make the whole movie there. Trust me. It'll work. It'll work. It'll work. Other than that, uh, I've said two places. Do you have another place you'd like to shout out or recommend? Off the top of my head. What was the place you just went to for your mom's Mother's Day? Would you shout out that place? Oh, Singing Panda. Yeah, yeah. You, you. Uh, I don't know if we want to get that deep into it, but oh, no, it was. Say it. It'll make you shit your pants. Of excitement and food. Spicy. It's not like bad food, but yeah, I, I went really spicy on it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's amazing. It was so good. Yeah. Best Chinese, but best Chinese food you can get for sure. That good. Yes. Okay, I love that. Uh, I granted, love that. so I what was like, I haven't what tried was your go to of... there? Where is it at? I don't know. I've never even heard of it until you said something. It's in it's close to downtown Chandler off of yeah. Arizona Avenue. Okay. Um, Arizona Avenue and Chandler Heights. Okay. Or close to, yeah, it's like, I would say it's pretty close. Between Chandler I mean Arizona Avenue and McQueen. Okay. And it was that good. I would definitely recommend it. Fuck I mean, yeah. Even the reviews, like if you look it up, yeah, have great reviews on it. It's definitely worth a try. Um, All right. I, I mean, I love Panda Express. I love so. Panda Express. My go-to there, man, orange chicken and the Beijing beef with fried rice. I'm just like a chow mein. You orange, like chow mein? Oh, I, love I don't chow, like chow mein. Some chow mein. I'm not a fan of it. Orange chicken. No. Beef and broccoli. Fuck. Set. I'm starving now. I should have eaten before I came eat? here. No. I'm going to eat. I got to feed my wife after. Oh, so I'm going to feed my wife after. I said, what did I do? I think we might go to Chili's. I'm not sure. They have like a new thing, like a big mozzarella stick, like the size of my forearm. Okay. I want it. Sounds really good. Yeah. She get a pizookie too. Do they have pizookies there? I, I thought they had the brownie sundae thing oh, with like right, the, the right. ice yeah, cream yeah, at yeah. the top and then the brownies in that there. Sounds really good. Fun fact. So, <laughs> you know, my, you know, my, uh, so when I was younger, that that brownie Sunday thing. Mm-hmm. Rest in peace to my grandmother. She bought me and my cousins it, right? Okay. And I go to take a big piece, and my cousin scooped it right out of my spoon. So I waited until he was almost done with the damn thing to take it out of his, and I took the last bite, and I got in trouble. And they bought him his own Sunday, and said I was in timeout. Bullshit, right? Do you know and, that's a huh. really good place to like just what? desserts and stuff. What? Like, what shakes? What? Sonic. 
Dude, Sonic is incredible. Like, I, I love Sonic. Sonic. Really good. Sonic smacks, like, almost 99% of the time you go. Their shakes, their smoothies. Their customer service is really good. One time I got overcharged, like, a lot of money. I mean, a lot of money. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the fuck happened in their system. And they got it corrected, like, pretty fast. And gave me, like, a bunch of free shit. And so, like... Think about their tater tots. Dude, oh, their tater tots, their corn dogs. I love... They also do, like... What? Is it, is it once a year or do is it like a frequent thing throughout the year where they'll just do yeah 99 cent hot or corn dog days yeah 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 yeah. they do it like i think throughout the year i'm yeah, not 100 percent, but it, it's good they just did it recently yeah I mean, and I, it smacked man it smacked did my stomach hurt afterwards fuck yeah it did but did i feel good in the moment yeah when you go if you go to a restaurant and your stomach isn't fucked up afterwards it's not a good restaurant i've like kind of come to that no 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 seriously seriously Ser- okay. hear me out okay. anytime you've ever gone to a great restaurant maybe your stomach isn't hurting but we're not going to go as far to talk about what happens after that hurting or maybe it doesn't but if you don't fuck it if you're not sitting on the toilet after you're done eating like a couple hours later mm-hmm. be honest with me like don't you feel that maybe like the food just wasn't that good like if you're not leaving full and then relieving yourself later i think something's wrong with the place oh okay i see so you're saying like you should leave full and then but no you should be like if you go to a really good place yeah you should be so full you stuffed yourself where you're hurting after you leave yes okay but but then later oh okay yeah i understand like singing panda i I understand what you mean i mean i'm not trying to get tmi here but no singing panda just spicy yeah, but ser- but so st- I, still, I like spicy food. it's so good. Fucking Santan Flats, man. Made me feel that way. Second I got home, pff, I was all good. Yeah. Hour later, yeah. I told you there when we were there. Oh. I told you how I was going to feel. So I love that. Shout out to all those places. Please go check out Singing Panda, Liberty Market. Uh, check out all of Downtown Gilbert. Check out Pecan Entertainment and check out Santan Flats. Those are our recommendations for this month of what to do in Arizona. What? What's one place that you want to try? What's like What's place one we, place? Yeah, yeah. We both uh, oh. I personally, hmm, there's a lot. Uh, I'd really have to think about it, like right off the top of my head. Um, like, there's a place, place that I want to, there's one place I want to go back to that I've only been to once. Okay, where's A that? Buffalo spot. I really liked it the one time I had it. Okay. I don't know if you've ever been there, but it was really good. Um, one place that we should go try. <sighs> I've never been to Caldwell's and I think you have. So no, no. So, okay. That's probably like the place because I've never been there. So barbecue. I love barbecue. We're about to have barbecue this weekend. There's a wedding. I believe it's what Miss Little Barbecue. Uh, Phoenix. Never heard of it. I don't like Phoenix. That's why I fucking hate Phoenix, man. You just got to drive there early. Like they sell out. Like once they sell out, yeah, it's done. You know what place I think is very overrated though? And it always sells out. It's like a bunch. They have a bunch of different locations. There's one on Mill. There's one in Phoenix. There's one in um, Gilbert or Chandler area. It's like pasty. What the fuck is it called? It's like a pastry. And then there's like meat in it. I'm trying to remember. I don't remember what it's called. I know you've said the place before. Uh, it's not Cornish Pass. That's it. I think it's the most overrated fucking place. What? I do not like that you place. You take that back. No, I will not. I think it's so you overrated. You don't like Cornish Pass? No, dude. I've tried it so many times, and I just never get the appeal. I've tried so many different ones, and every time I try it, I'm just so disappointed. Every single time. Like, my parents are obsessed with it, and I just do not get the hype for it. I love, I will say, like, it's just not my thing. Like, everyone else loves it, but I love the... Are you um, going to get so many dislikes on this? I don't care. I'm being <laughs> honest. It's not my cup of tea. My uh, wife, hey, it's hey, also hey, not hey. her cup of tea hey, either. It's, it's it's your opinion. What, what, what's your respect. go-to there when you've gone? Which one? Oh. <sighs> There's a lot. Look at the menu. Yeah, they have a lot of different options. But yeah. every single shepherd's pie is amazing. Oh, oh, fuck that one. You, oh I hate shepherd's pie though. You don't like lamb? No, 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 no. I like lamb. Okay, so I have like a little bit of an issue with shepherd's pie now. Okay. I used to love it. Then I watched Midsummer. And the pie stuff has like ruined any sort of edible pie for me. Gotcha. You know what I'm? You know the scene I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah, it's just like, and it sucks because I really want to like it again, but I just can't like, I 
chicken bot pie fuck no shepherd's pie fuck no apple pie i'll still eat though okay what's your favorite type of pie Ooh. do you like whipped cream on top or ice cream on the side if i'm doing uh, so i like apple pie but i don't love it like if it's an option yeah if it's an option amongst other pies i might not go for it mm-hmm. but apple pie warmed up with a soup of vanilla bean ice cream is always that's like amazing peak I love pecan pie. Okay. I'm good a big pick. fan of pecan pie. Yeah. Key lime pie and cherry pie if they're done correctly. I I I agree not, on both of those if they're like you said done correctly. If it because most sometimes you get one of those pies and they're too sweet. Like yeah. there's no tartness to it. Mm-hmm. There needs to be a nice Key balance. lime is like the That's biggest exactly. thing to that. Yeah. Like it has to, to be perfect. If you don't have the tart what the fuck you doing yeah and even cherry pie would say like i like it a little bit more tart you like pumpkin no really okay i as a kid i really was into it but now i'm more into the pumpkin sweet rolls like i'd rather eat okay. that than They're a pumpkin bad. pie not bad. and i only like homemade ones so my mom makes it if gotcha. anything i don't like going to walmart and buying it i think it gets a little overrated so like even during thanksgiving time where pumpkin pies mm-hmm. usually were right um I won't. I will skip out on pies altogether if it's just pumpkin. Uh huh. I'm always hoping, like, please have a pecan pie. Really? Yes. You should just start bringing it, and then I should. And that's then, right. Because that's I the whole should. thing. If no one else eats it, you I take it should. home and you get a whole pecan pie to Holy yourself. Holy shit! You know, my favorite dessert is like as of lately is like brownies. Like I just love a good brownie. Mm. Like I don't know what it is, but just like not like that. Your your fucking cosmic brownie at Walmart, like fucking freshly made brownie like you know at work how they give out the cake yeah and you always ask me like it's cake day because you know i like cake i always pick the brownie every time yeah so so speaking of like brownies and stuff mm-hmm. good friend alex since like we were young like yeah. elementary school till like even now if i go yeah. visit him it's always like, you want to make a bazooki or some brownies? Fuck, man. <laughs> Bro, it's like, too. like just recently uh, I, I saw him not too long ago. And it's like, you know what sounds really good right now? I'm like, bazooki. And yeah. he's like, do you have ice cream? Yeah. And cookie dough? He's yeah. like, I do. I was like, I'll make, let's make a bazooki. Fuck yeah. It's always is good. It's, it's, it's always, always good. Have you seen that bazooki bar in Mesa? They have a bazooki bar. Yeah, which I guess goes back to your question of one place that we should go try. We should absolutely go try that place. My sister went. She said it was really good. So uh, let me know. Fuck yeah, man. Let's do it. But I guess but, it's time to talk music, right? Yeah, we've been going on a nice little... Ramble. Local ramble it's okay. I'm bit. sure we're gonna fucking ramble on this stuff too. So, he our podcast is very interesting because I have 30 other things to fucking do <laughs> in terms of media and stuff. So I cannot consume everything. Yeah, okay? yeah, a lot. So when me and Tyler were putting this podcast together, I told him it's his goal to research everything, and then I'll read the cliff notes, and then he's gonna basically story tell the situation. I might ask questions. I might ask fucking out-of-pocket questions um but that's how this is gonna go you're probably gonna think i am the dumbest person ever but this is an r-rated fuck around podcast where it's just two friends fucking around and that's how all of our conversations have always gone they'll go in the most weirdest and objectively unique ways and i've always loved that about our conversations so um if this is your first time watching or listening uh bless your heart (laughs) so (laughs) Uh, get us into this main topic. Drake and Kendrick have been beefing, and uh, well, and just like the fun thing about this is that you know you're you're very much on media and everything. Yeah, and I know you, this you, is exactly. happening. You see, and I've listened to the songs. Yeah, and from a listener perspective, yeah. right? They get a unique perspective of you hearing and like actually mm-hmm. hearing all this stuff for the first time. Yep. So I say there's a fun unique aspect to how this goes down other podcasts will be a little bit different like the next one it'll be related to interstellar potentially Pot- oh yeah potentially oh, we're still there. deciding the original topic for this week was going to be particles and stuff like that space and interstellar we might hold off just depends on when they re- announce that they're doing yeah. everything i'm very excited for that one though 
we'll probably have to rewatch Interstellar and then go back and see it in the theaters too. I'm excited. But all right. Timeline. Yeah. So March twenty second. Okay. Kendrick takes shots. Is there a reason why have they always had a beef? Oh, Ooh. nice. You just got attacked. Was that the light? It was a light. Ooh. I'll just leave it. Something just attacked Tyler in this place. Should we get into a studio? It's a ghost. It's a ghost. <laughs> okay, go. So right. well, I guess have they already have they always had a beef? I don't know this. If you don't know, it's okay. Maybe someone from the audience will tell us. Oh well, yeah. Um, from my knowledge, no, this was like the very first time it's been mm-hmm. like well, Kendrick did do one diss track on a big Sean song okay. years ago. About kinda, Drake? No, about everybody. He kind of just uh, went off. I can't remember what song it is. Okay. Well. Some people know it. I'm not an expert on this stuff. No. Nah. We just wanted to talk about it. It's interesting. It is interesting because it's also a really fun thing to have seen. People are actually paying attention and like deciphering all these lyrics and yep. actually paying attention to rap culture as a whole. Yep. And aside from like Drake's house getting shot up. <laughs> yeah. I think it's been really cool and fun and interesting. But so March 22nd, mm-hmm. uh, Future and Metro Boomin yeah. do a collab song. Kendrick's on it. Yep. Takes a jab at Drake. Cool. So and then everybody's like, is Drake going to do anything? Yeah. People are asking him. He's on tour. March 25th, Drake addresses the diss while on his tour. That's pretty much what it was. He just said, you know what? I hear everybody, but you know what? I'm going to continue on with my tour. I will actually full-on address it later as everybody is assuming it's a full-on diss track, what she did. This has been going on for a while then, so. Yeah, Yeah. not a little bit. I mean, since March, so. March 22nd, Sometimes these disses, remember when MGK tried dissing Eminem? Oh, that was so funny. In one month? And so then funny. he doesn't even do fucking rap anymore. It was so funny. This is great. Um, and then Drake officially responds with mm-hmm. push-ups. Yeah. And that was on April 19th. Yeah. So a few days after. Shortly after Drake releases push-ups, follows up with Taylor Made Freestyle. Okay. Which is the reason why I, everybody, don't quote me on this, but I believe that he had Taylor... Swift's producer uh, produced the song. That's why it's called Taylor be. Made Freestyle. Okay, could be. Kendrick responds with Euphoria on April 30th. <laughs> Euphoria was great. <laughs> Euphoria, yeah. And I think that was probably my favorite one that he put out. Uh, it was. I like Euphoria, but not like us still. Yeah, it's but, insane. But we'll get yeah. to that. Um, and that was on April 30th. Mm-hmm. May 30th. Third, I'm sorry, April 30th is Euphoria. May 3rd, Kendrick follows up with 616 in LA. <laughs> I don't feel like talking about all nah, the details of nah. each song. We're just more talking through the timeline. Yeah. Drake responds that same day with Family Matters, which mm-hmm. is the best Drake. It was the best this he did. Yes, and, and it's I- actually on the chart. I was actually checking earlier yeah. today. It's actually the only song that's actually on like the top global charts right now. Okay. Out of all these? Out of, well, just Drake's. Or just Drake's. Out of Drake's. That's like the only one. Well, Kendrick has, I believe, Euphoria. Yeah. No, no. Family. I think Family. No. Well, hey, and we'll, just, we'll get back to yeah, it. Just keep going. Um, and then Kendrick responds seemingly right back after he does Family Matters. He responds with Meet the Gramps. That's Which, the one that talks about like his potential daughter, right? This, yeah, this is the yeah. one where he talks to his his dad. Yeah, talks to his mom. Yeah, talks to basically everybody. Dissing, yeah, that Drake personally knows. <laughs> that was the one where it was like it got everybody realizing like Kendrick really just like Kendrick went in. That was like so. I think the other ones were kind of like playful, you know. I wouldn't say so. Like, to a playful, certain extent. Yeah. It wasn't like super personal. Yeah. Oh, oh no, Boo. Boo's going to fall and kill you. Yeah, probably. See, this place. I'm new studio. You. It's haunted. I got to put everything back together. Two weeks, guys. Two weeks. Studio will be fixed <laughs> up. 
for watching video wise. Um, but yeah, that was the one where everybody was like, even like people were putting memes up. It's like Kendrick made me realize like I'm not hating hard yeah. enough or something yeah. like just funny. Like even like the little the anime that you sent me. Yeah, like. I sent Tyler. Someone made the anime between Drake and Kendrick, and it's literally the greatest thing I've probably seen this last three days. Could you link that? If I can find it again, yeah. I mean, yeah. I can if it's still up, yeah. Yeah. If not, yeah, maybe you gotta link that. that maybe I'll maybe I'll, maybe I'll like put it in right here just for people to watch. We got to do a shout out to the creator too. Yeah, I'll shout him out in that video. Absolutely. When I see it, but yeah. Um. So yeah. <laughs> So Meet the Grams is really when mm -hmm. I was like, holy shit. Yeah. And what was that? So next day, May 4th, Kendrick takes another jab, <laughs> releasing Not Like Us. Yeah. Which is right now regarded as the highest streaming song on Spotify. Like it broke charts across yeah. the board. It's number two on the charts right now on Spotify. Mm -hmm. Um. Let's see, and then right after so he meet the grams, which as of May twelfth, so yesterday, not like us has seventy million streams on Spotify. Drake follows up with releasing the hard part six, April seventh. Drake house is reported to have shot on site and one security guard shot, leaving them in critical condition. There is no. There's nothing else after that, right? As of right now. May 13th? Yeah. Nothing that okay. I have. I no more disses, nothing. Nothing yet. Okay, interesting. So there's rumors and stuff like mm -hmm. that. There's I'm very interested to see where this goes now, specifically with the shooting to see how involved that gets now. Yeah, Does it, it come back? And well, it is, is it any, is it, re, is it tied? It, that's where it's like also the weird yeah. thing that people have been speculating is that. Is this, it even tied? To is it Kendrick? tied to it? Or whole thing. it could have also been a fucking random fan that wanted to spark some fucking yeah, thing in this. Absolutely. And did it. Could have been regarded to something else. Um, yeah. it, it's it's very interesting. I've always found that rap culture is like one of the more unique things to follow through music history. And, ju and just in general, I mean, there's always been rival... Ri I can never say that fucking Rivalries. Word. Yeah, in music, in movies, and TV, and everything. And specifically when it comes down to rap culture, like it was always like West Coast, East Coast, Tubac, Biggie, yeah. you know? And that um, whole thing with it too, which was which was big at the time. Yeah, Obviously, huge. I wasn't fucking alive during the time, so yeah. I can't tell you everything. Yes, I'm not. Yes, we're that long, young. Leave us alone. We still love both of them. And then you get into like, um, I, I mean, personally for me, the last one I could really remember before this that was this big was Eminem and MGK, where it was like a big talked about thing. Mm. But like, I guess most recent is like Offset and uh, Chris Brown. Have been having like a a thing, so you, you, which far, I don't know fully. I have no idea. I, I just my wife's a big Chris Brown it. fan, oh, so okay. I only hear from her. But apparently, he bought out like all the all the seats at one of his concerts, so it was only the front row that was there. <laughs> Again, don't know how much of that is true. I'm just going off of random stuff, and this is rambles. But to like really talk about Drake and Kendrick, it's so interesting to, for me to see them beefing. Yeah. And like how personal it gets. And you wonder what's happening behind the scenes too. Where like this is all front facing, you mm -hmm. know. Are they like is there like a more serious thing that kind of like sparked that diss? Yeah. Or did Kendrick just get pissed? And w I mean, he went deep. Well, like, it all started with um it was J. Cole and Drake saying like the yeah. big three and then Kendrick J. Cole dropped the fuck out. Yeah, and that's also another thing we'll talk about too. Um, but Kendrick is like, no, it's just like there is no three; it's just me. Mm -hmm. And everybody, again, everybody has their own opinions. If he's right to say that or not, um, the big three—that's what he was saying. No, like basically, no, there is no big three; it's just me. So they were saying like, the I'm big King. three right now is Drake, J. Cole, and Kendrick. Yeah, is what Kendrick. I mean, sorry, which was what Drake and J. Cole, J. Cole were saying on the song. Okay, because I, so I didn't know that. That's interesting. So, first off, I wouldn't put Drake and J Cole in the top three rappers right See now. That, and that's also really controversial for you to say that too, because I would at least put J Cole up there. I I would back in the day. I used to love J Cole so much. Like two albums ago, I was obsessed with him. I still love the one album with Wet Dreams on it. I can't remember what it's called though off the top of my head, but I love Forest Hills. Yes. 
I love that album. It is one of my favorite albums. But if you're talking about modern day rappers right now, I think Drake peaked on Take Care. I don't think he's made a great album since he's he's had good songs. Yeah. But nothing that's like, shit, I'm gonna listen to the whole album. You gotta sell me on that. Yeah. Kendrick, I listened to the entire album every single time. Yeah, but they're also two do two very different artists. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah. And that's where I mean, you would not like the days of actually want at least for me sitting and listening to a full drake album not really interested in it but to say that he actually has like he's not putting out great singles mm -hmm. he does but he puts out good but singles. that's where he where drake is he is a rap pop artist he's not a full rapper like that another thing about drake too is that even though family matters is great of a song Drake is also known to be using ghostwriters. Yeah, which is a big thing. Right? And so I love all the memes on that. Right? There's that whole aspect of it as well. I I could put Yeah. I could maybe I could probably put Drake as one of the best. I could put him as one of the best for a specific reason. Um, he's essentially like the Michael Jackson of our time in a, in a way, like how much he has. Excuse the fuck out of me. What did you just say? I mean, finish your thing, but yeah. Our modern day Michael Jackson, man, I think you're fucking crazy. Who would you, who would you switch out for that? No one. I don't think there is another Michael Jackson. No, I'm not saying that there ever is from his caliber, but to say a modern day, absolutely. Because of just how much of a pop artist he is. I don't know. I don't know if I could go with that. I don't. I just like putting Drake and Michael Jackson in the same vein. Okay, I see. I see what yeah, you mean. I know what just, you mean. Yeah, I'm not comparing the two. No, yeah. I'm just saying from again how like much, a cultural standpoint. Yes. Okay, that makes more sense. Yes. I can see that. Um, I'm trying to still think of my big three to like knock out. Uh, I I still go Kendrick. Like I like Kendrick is king. Yeah, I, I genuinely think so. I wanted to say Travis Scott. Like, I've never been the biggest fan of him, but I really liked Utopia. I really liked Utopia. Like, if you ask me, who do you like more as an artist, Drake or Travis Scott? I'd, I listen to probably more Travis Scott than Drake. Mm -hmm. But Drake is producing more hits. The numbers don't lie. Yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. On the numbers, yeah. Cause That's it's, what I'm saying. It, it don't come, if we're looking at number-wise, top three, yeah. I think those three are the ones to say. As a personal preference, yeah, who would you say is the top three? And they have to be like currently working right now. Like it can't be someone that passed away or uh, yeah, anything absolutely. like that. But I mean, so like modern day, because if you ask me, I mean, people that are still alive, I would put Nas up there still. Okay, that's a good But pick. he's also not a very, he's still, to this day, still making great music. He's a freaking mm -hmm. word wizard. But then there's also artists that I really enjoy that are not really well known, like Atmosphere, uh, Aesop, not ASAP, Aesop Rock. Um, huge fan of Aesop Rock. So there's a lot of rappers, I mean, I would say are better from a personal preference. Yeah. But for, I mean, numbers don't lie kind of perspective. I would say that those three are accurate. Okay, fair enough. Modern day right now. Modern day, yeah. But what is my personal preference mm -hmm. and which do I think is actually, an, uh, from an unbiased standpoint, a better lyricist and rapper? I would say Kendrick. Yeah. Kendrick is. <laughs> but I'm not saying that J. Cole isn't. No, and one. as I've <laughs> kind of been going through, I, I would still keep J. Cole there. E even if I didn't like love the last two albums of his, I would still keep him up there. And that's also another thing about J. Cole is that he's not creating super poppy songs they're no. very heavy in the lyrics and that's where like this is i'm the, happy j cole this out this article says j cole a poet of the people that that's well, I, I i think personally like that's a that's a great thing i'm gonna shout out a rhyme junkie that that that's what they put rhyme there. junkie yeah the website yeah oh that's another yeah yeah see, that's another i mean lil wayne yeah honestly though I'd probably put Lil Wayne over Drake. I would put Lil Wayne over Drake as well. So I guess that would be my top three. Kendrick, 
uh, J. Cole, Lil Wayne. Yes, absolutely. And specifically, like, what Lil Wayne's done. And even though... Lil I, Wayne has been rapping since he was, like, 16. Maybe yeah. even younger. Yeah. And his albums are also... Like, his last one was pretty good. I He's liked it. He's consistent. I mean, he, the amount of great songs are just, like, absolute bangers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Lil Wayne is... I agree. Wow. I agree. I do want to shout out... Uh, I am a big fan of Meg The Stallion. I was not at first. <laughs> I was not at first. Yeah. And then I went and saw a movie where she rapped in... And she made this song for the movie. Like, it's it's like a musical, and I fucking hated the movie. But, like, that one song, I was like, damn, she's really fucking yeah. good. And then I went and listened to a bunch of her music, and I was like, she's a really good artist. Then I watched an interview with her where they put a 90s beat behind her, and she had to freestyle. And I guess they do it for a bunch of different artists. Yeah. I watched, I went down a whole rabbit hole of, like, 20 artists that we're all fans of. Mm-hmm. She was the best one. I, I literally, I sent it to my wife. I was like, I want her to do a whole album like this. I would fucking buy buy the vinyl. Yeah. Like if it was that good. And that's even, yeah. So, shout out to her. You got to give the women a little bit of love too. And then, yeah, people would also put Jay-Z up there. I mean, yeah. Kanye West, you know, the, despite the controversy, you can't deny the fact that he is still making insane music. What was the last album he did? Vultures with Ty Dollar Sign. Oh, yeah. I forgot about and that. And I'm pretty sure, like, he has his daughter on there, too, like, doing yeah. vocals. Honestly, I don't think I've listened to it. Really? You no. should definitely listen I to it. It's really good. I probably should. Uh, yeah. Nah. Uh, what is one artist that you love that is dead? I mean, there's a lot. From rap. Mac Miller's easy, the top one. That was, my, that was mine. Mac's my favorite artist of all time. So of all time, yeah, I can I, tell you. Like, if you ask me all time, guns by it, I kind of pick it's one. The, he's the one artist I listen to every single day. Um, if you ask me on like a nostalgic point, the Foo Fighters, who's not yeah, a part he, of rap, but like yeah, I love them, I still do. I mean, they would be top five no matter what. Mm. Pop, my favorite artist right now, working Post Malone. I dude I listen to every single one of his albums I get obsessed like he just came out with that song with Morgan Wallen I had some help yeah that I'm a fucking obsessed with I want him to do a whole country album I think he'd do great I listened to a bunch of country covers he did he's phenomenal Post Malone is my favorite like country is having an awesome spotlight right now yes it is it's been great so uh posty if you were watching this Give me a country album, please. Oh, he, please. You know he's working he has on to. One. He has to be. He's absolutely working on I one. Fucking want absolutely, it. I would be shocked if his next album is not I, country. Well, that's my prediction. I think it is because I was expecting this song to be Morgan Wallen featuring Post Malone. No, it's Post Malone featuring Morgan Wallen. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. I know it's more poppy country well, and that's shit where, like yeah, that. But and that's where it's going to be. I think I'm confident. I'd be surprised. And mm-hmm. I mean, who knows? It might be like another just Post Malone rap album. And it could just, be. That's always been good. But his last album showed me that he can do so many other things. Oh, he's a crazy music. I think that's talented. my favorite album of his. And th- I know that's not the popular thing, but it, I know it wasn't all hype and shit like that, yeah. but it was so personal. And like, I felt like I got to know him a little bit more listening to that album, yeah. which is not something that you can say about a lot of artists nowadays. Mm. So. What about what about you? Like any other artists that you kind of like want to shout out or talk about that you like? No, Arctic Monkeys. Arctic Monkeys, yeah. Your Last, go-to, like every day, you would say? Uh, no, not every day. Only because I've been just in a different mood listening to music lately. Mm-hmm. Um, been listening to more of like this '90s, actually earlier, probably like more '70s, '80s synth pop. Nice. Okay. Like just synth I like that. music. Um think any kind of like cyber punk kind of like music but a little bit more mellow i've been really interested in just more sounds lately um been listening to a lot of pot just different podcasts but music i have not been listening to like artists specifically just been more on discovery and listening to more sounds and different i've been trying to culture myself and uh listen to more movie scores without watching the movie i used to never do this so if I do listen to a movie score, I'm like really big on it. Mm. Um, Babylon is one that like I consistently listen to like almost every other day. Mm-hmm. La La Land is up there. Um, th- but the best score like so far of the decade is the Across the Spider-Verse score. 
Oh. Not the music. I, I thought the, the album was okay. The score itself. Like, it's one of those few scores that, like, I sit there and I listen and I can just envision the scene that it's in because it's so dedicated to that scene. Like, when Spider Man 2099, like, pops through this portal and just starts beating the fuck out of a, a vulture variant. And it's just, like, so sick, mm -hmm. like, the way that it ruptures up. And I'm just like, how the fuck does someone come up with this? And uh, he made it with Metro Boom, and it's so unique to see how, like, it all intertwines perfectly. Yeah. So I love that. What's a smaller artist that you've listened to that maybe just doesn't get the love that you feel like it is? Maybe one that you've discovered through doing this. It can just be some of, like, the rhythm stuff. Um, I mean, if there's one artist I would say definitely deserves just listening um, I think he already gets the recognition, but it's just more underground. Uh, Aesop Rock. A okay, good A one. A-E-S-O-P-E -E okay. Rock. Um, it's very confusing from Aesop Rocky. Yeah, it, I mean, it, <laughs> it sounds very familiar, right? Yeah. Um, he's just the, the most beautiful storyteller. I mean, okay. his vocabulary is absolutely insane. I've only listened to a couple, so I definitely need to culture and listen. I mean, but that's, like, even his songs, like, you'll be listening to it. Mm -hmm. And I'll be like, wait, what is that he talking about? And I'll have to read the lyrics. There's one song that's off of his, a little bit, I would say now, like his older albums. Mm -hmm. It's called Ruby 18. Yeah. Or, yeah, Ruby 18, I believe it's called. And the whole time you're listening to the lyrics and, like, you won't know, like, really what's going on. You have to really be paying attention. The song is literally about, and it's only about a two-minute song, but it happens so quick. And it's about a story of there's like a birthday party. It's like a little kid's birthday. And all the parents and all the adults are just kind of entertaining everybody, not really paying it too close attention to all the kids. And the little girl falls into the pool. Mm -hmm. No one's still really paying attention just quite yet. Again, everything's happening so fast. And in this whole story the only thing person animal to notice that this girl's in trouble is the dog named ruby oh ruby ends up saving the kid at the end of the day and the last words on the song is everybody says good dog <laughs> and it ends but you listen to it even like the whole beat the tone everything is does not seem like what's going yeah, on yeah but it's just storytelling when oh you it's actually absolutely listen back. beautiful Okay. beautifully made i love that and there's like artists like that where i'm like you are like a full-on yeah. um, lyricist master or an art uh and what is it a wordsmith mm -hmm. is how i describe those artists that's how i feel about uh not not in terms of lyrics but in terms of like his gravitas his energy um my wife went to the big time rush concert with my sister and her sister like two years ago and their opener was uh, this guy named Spencer Sutherland. And ever since then, like, they would play his music in the car. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, he's good. And then last year on my birthday, he actually was out here, and we, they bought tickets, and I went. I totally fell in love with his music. And it's his energy on stage and stuff like that that, like, really made me go, this guy is kind of fucking special. And he kind of reminds me of something that we don't get from a lot of performers nowadays, like, just the way that they use the stage is something that I, I'm not comparing him to Michael Jackson or Elvis Presley because <laughs> no one defies those. But he has his own gravitas like that where yeah. he owns that fucking stage. Mm -hmm. And I love it. And he owns his music too. Like when I listen to his music, it's like each and every one of the songs feels special to that. And I really like that. So mm -hmm. I want to ask you, so a couple artists coming out this year, hopefully with new albums. Uh, Chance the Rapper, Donald Glover released... Uh, yeah, something I, did I didn't he listen released, to it though. I have not listened to it either. He did release a single, I believe. Yeah. So I I need this man. I I missed both of them. Uh I love, love, love both of their music so much. Who 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 are you fans of both of them, Chance the Rapper and Donald Charles Glover? Gambino. Or more just one of them? Or uh, yeah, Travis Gambino, I guess more. I personally have not listened to that much chance. I mean, I listened to Chance the Rapper. Yeah. Um He's not my personal favorite. Okay. I do like him on a few songs that he's yeah. featured on. Couldn't name them off the top of my head. Um, but he's, yeah, he's never been a rapper that I've 
mm-hmm. an artist that I have followed. Definitely more Childish Gambino for sure. Oh, Ch- so Childish from, Gambino, man, is like one of my favorites. Okay, things. so as of today, April 13th, okay. his album is out. Now, is this an actual thing or did he rearrange it? Because I was reading that uh, it looks like he has another an actual album coming out this year and this is like a touch-up of an older one. I could be wrong. I'm I'm going off. If you give me one second, I'll actually look up his tweet. I don't see. But any, let me. I don't see. recognize any of these songs. I mean, unless you we played them. Let's see. Um, like none of these songs I recognize. Give me a second. I got you. I got you. I got you. He's going on world tour too. Is he really? Mm-hmm. That's why the community movies. Re- <laughs> okay, so he said streaming now. This album is a finished version of 3.15.20, the album I put out four years ago. Ah. There's a special vinyl coming out with visuals for each song. The all-new Childish Gambino album comes out this summer. So, okay. It's a touch-up. Okay. It's a touch-up. He's a tinker, if you ask me. And he's a great fucking writer. I well, love this dude. He's also doing um the Lando Cal- Cal- Calrissian uh, movie. He's writing it with his brother right now. Gotcha. So. There's, I believe, I could be wrong. I believe also another artist to touch up an album that was recently released was Kanye when he released. Um, Maybe. I kind of fell off it? Kanye, Father's to be honest. I, I fell off Kanye. You'd have to look it up. I, I love I a remember. lot of his music, but. Oh, I'm still a big fan of Kanye. Yeah, it's just definitely a lot of the. Just, All the controversies. Yeah, it just kind of like kills my mood sometimes. I try to look past, I mean. The actual, you can say whatever you want as if you're making good music. That's not reflecting whatever you think or whatever it is. Yeah. You just mi- I look. I like to just appreciate the music. And I get that. I mean, I go back and listen to some of his older stuff, but it's just tough sometimes. Like to to stay in the mindset of being excited for anything he says. Uh, like it's the same thing with actors too. Yeah. They say something dumb can kill my excitement for some of their movies. Like. I just uh, I'm trying to think recently there was a, there was something an actor said that now I'm just like eh, I don't care about your yeah. movies anymore um, but don't get me wrong I'll still go see the fucking movie and mm. I'll, I'll form my own opinion same with music too so Tyler I think this is where we got to start wrapping it up with our final little bit of this now you and me talked about a topic that I remember you brought up when we first originally started trying doing a podcast and I pitched it to you is recommending one thing for one another oh, yeah. to try for the next month. Now, I know we talked about the one that you want to give to me. And I'm going to break your heart. I have seen it. The Kung Fu, I have seen it, yeah. Aww. I watched the trailer today. I'm like, yes, I've seen this movie. It's awesome. Kung Fu Hustle, right? Yeah. Awesome fucking movie. So you are allowed to give me anything to go try. Even if it's an anime that I know you've been watching. No, you because you already said it. You already said that you watched yeah. it. Uh-huh. I'll, I'll give you one. Uh-huh. I'll give you something. Okay. I want you to watch The Killer on Netflix because I've been begging you to watch this fucking thing forever. Okay. Okay? All right. You want the me? Killer. What do you got for me? I'm not sure because you watch pretty much everything. You want me to give you one that I know you want me to watch? And I'll do it for you. Is it Terrifier? No, no. We got to hold that till later <laughs> this year when the new one comes out. We got to put that on the, the Flicks and Friends one. Yeah, okay. What, uh, three body problems. I will watch it for you. Beyond my thing that I still think it's going to get canceled, I, I will watch it. Doesn't. it. I well, hope it doesn't. It's been out for a month and uh, nothing, <laughs> nothing. Maybe, so, uh, but I I will watch it. I will watch it. I, watch I can't guarantee. Killer? I can't guarantee that I'll finish it, but I'll watch a majority of it. Before. Then I have to watch the killer. Yes. So, okay. I think you'll love it. I think you'll love the killer. I don't think I'll dislike it. Yeah. But this this is my way of like making you watch it. <laughs> and this is your way of making me finally watch Three Body Problems. So yeah. Is that your favorite show of the year? I know you don't watch a lot, but would you say that's your favorite of the year? Maybe. Okay. You know what you know really what like will be gentleman. out? Oh, yeah, I need to watch that, too. Which one would you rather me watch? The Gentleman or Three Body You haven't watched The Gentleman yet? Mm -mm. Oh, watch The Gentleman. Only because I know because... Do you think that'll get... Is it, like, the movie? Is it actually the same story as the movie? Oh, yeah, it ties in, like, basically straight into... So watch that instead. Yeah. Okay, so I'll watch The Gentleman. You'll be more satisfied from the aspect of... Okay, so if it gets canceled, I'm not going to be like... Yeah. God, man, really? Okay, fair enough. I, I do promise you, though, the second they 
if you don't gotta promise they me nothing. renew if they renew it i'll you watch don't gotta it. promise me none if it if it, a if they renew it oh i'm gonna watch it then i'll yeah, be hyped yeah i do want to say the next time we record you know what will be out hmm. the first episode of the bear season three so maybe our next episode, because I, I do want to put this out there. If you want to give us a topic, please email me at ZachPopeReviews at gmail.com. Your subject can just be Rest Stop Rambles, episode three, topic I recommend. Or, but Or realistically, it's just like maybe there is a subject that you want to, us to talk about yeah. that's not really well known. That you're like, I really want someone to research into this and just bring it to mm-hmm. an audience. I'm curious about it, whatever it is. Yeah. Shoot us a recommendation. We might be really yeah. interested. And I'm, I June's, might be like, okay, I'm looking into this. Yeah, this June's seems a awesome. Big month. You know what else comes out in June? Hmm. House of Dragons season two. Oh, that's going to be good. Don't get me yeah. wrong. I'm looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm lo- definitely looking more forward to The Bear. I love same, The Bear. Same. Is that your favorite show right now? Yeah. Okay. So I, I'm I would at, probably say it might actually okay. be my favorite show of all time right so now. So let me pitch this to you. Okay. Okay. All right. There's four big shows coming out in June. Literally four big shows. You okay. got the Star Wars The Acolyte, which I'm a little bit more on board after the last trailer, but okay. The Bear Season 3, yep. The Boy Season 4, oh. or House of Dragons Season 2. So you just rank them from excitement. I mean, Bear's going to be number one. Okay. House of Dragons, The Boys. And then Star Wars last. Yeah. Which I, isn't that wild. Like I, something about the Sith being last, but like it's just. It that's Star that's a Wars show that does not excite me as it used to. Yeah, that's I, just personal, dude. Take it from me; it's my favorite franchise of all time, and I'm like not. It's excited my, for this overall. It's my favorite franchise of all time because of just growing up with it. Yeah, as a kid, love Star Wars. Yeah. but right now, currently, I'm like, do you know what my excitement is? Yeah. Dead on this show. Well, I'm still excited in some departments for it, but do you know what the one thing that kills my excitement for this is? Hmm. The episodes are only thirty minutes long. Oof. And I'm just like, what the fuck are we doing here? Like, I know the bear. Like, sometimes the episodes are 30 minutes. Sometimes they're in hours. Yeah. Why are they 30 minutes? The bear makes a little bit more sense for that. Yeah. But don't you want your Game of Thrones? Well, like, when Disney Plus was announced, I'm like, oh, fuck yeah, we're getting Star Wars level. Man, I love the writers on this show. I love so much. I just, I need something to get me excited. We'll see. If I were to rank my excitement, it'd be uh, The Bear, The Boys, House of Dragon. Um, <laughs> Even uh, you, you're like... I got to think about that because House of Dragon season one was like fucking They, they brought it back. But The Boys, I'm coming off Gen V, which I think is the second best thing they've ever done in The Boys. So now I'm like a little bit more back on board with it all. Okay, I'm going to go The Bear, The House of Dragons, because I feel like that's a little bit more safer for me. So basically the same ranking as you. Then The Boys, which I think The Boys is going to be phenomenal, though. I think this will be their best season yet. I think this will be the best thing they've done yet. And then last but not least, Star Wars Acolyte. Sorry. just It is what it is. I just, I just want to live in a world where I love Star Wars again. <laughs> Yeah, fully. I would. Fully, I, I would really like them to put out some awesome stuff. Yeah, they should really it's like you know they should do what they similarly did to Marvel, mm. and say, hey, we're gonna have Deadpool still be part of the whole universe of Marvel, but we're like not pulling, like we're not pulling anything out well, of this. We're like we're going full rated R. Well, they the acolyte's start- supposed to be that way. It's supposed to be their most mature thing. I mean, you let but, you, you let me know. Yeah, you let me know if it's on scale of what their like Marvel well, is doing. The, my whole thing is like getting the Deadpool conversation. I don't think they need to make a rated R thing or no, a mature thing. I'm not saying that it needs to go all crazy, but at least like push the grit. Yeah, get. But that's not like I don't know. For me, like Deadpool and Wolverine could could not be coming out, and it could be fucking Fantastic Four next, but. As long as the movie's good, because that that's been the issue. Is oh, everyone, there's just been like, it's like when something comes out, Star Wars or Marvel, it's like half the fans love it or like it, and the other half just fucking do not like it at all. Yeah, but also, was it what was it? Um, they did a Deadpool release where it was like the regular version, and they released it at PG thirteen. Right? Don't bring that up. 
my that point thing was exactly. Awful. My point exactly. But do you know but why people, it was awful? People want. Yeah. They do want well, rated R stuff. Not so much rated R, but like you just, they know what people yeah. want. They're just not doing it. Not saying that it has yeah. to be Man, rated I could, R, but if you want yeah. it to be exciting, there's some things where you're like, yeah, you're going cool to have to have some it, things. For sure. But like, I would never want like a Captain America movie rated R, like personally for me. But like, if, if, if it, that Deadpool, for sure, I wouldn't PG-13 either, but if it, version, if it fit the story, if it yeah. fits the story, yes. If it fits the tone, yeah. But that if it's an alcohol, if it's known as the bad people, or even like a dark, like it could do so many things, like even bounty yeah. hunters, like that whole. I mean, again, fit the story. Mandalorian probably didn't need to have that, but in different ways, they could probably get away with some things. They can already. push the envelope a little yeah. bit, but why not? I, you brought up the worst fucking thing ever is that Deadpool PG thirteen version of Deadpool two. Now it's already coming off an inferior version of the first Deadpool. So Deadpool 2 was not my cup of tea. Then I watch a PG-13 version of this, and it just pisses me off. Because it's not the fact that it was PG-13. It just wasn't fucking good. I thought it was still good. I thought the second one was good. Did you ever see the PG-13 version? No, why would I want to? The It's literally the same thing. They just take out the blood and the, the Ex- cussing. Yeah, why but would I But the problem want to see with that? it is there was no point to make it. Like... But I've I've always contended that like if they were ten years down the line, if they were to make a reboot Deadpool, say for some fucking reason, Ryan Reynolds isn't coming back, they're just doing a whole brand new character. Mm-hmm. I'd be if they announced it was PG thirteen, I'd be fine. As long as it's a good fucking movie. Yes, I would love for it to be rated R. Yes, Deadpool is a more mature character for the most part. But I don't mind it as long as your story's good. Like, a lot, I know a lot of people got up in arms that the new Blade potentially might not be rated R. I think they've gone back on that now. I hope not. I hope they make it. I mean... But I'm open I'm to it saying, as long as it's a good movie. If you're making a story about a vampire killer, I think... It maybe should. I think it's a good idea you should have it rated R. Maybe. I, I don't know. I just... Because you're going to have to show... what. Isn't it if you show any amount of blood, it instantly gets to a radar version? As long as the blood's not red. If, exactly. if they make the blood blue, it could be, ra- so it could be PG-13. Strange. Think about Transformers. Optimus Prime is fucking ripping off some dinosaur's head, and yeah. you see all the black goo go everywhere. Yeah, but those are machines. I would expect them to have, like, oil. That just makes but that's the thing. Like, uh, like Twilight. Not a great thing. But Breaking Dawn Part 2 got an R rating originally. Yeah. Then they had to change all the blood to black. All right. Well, that's on them. <laughs> but but that's the thing. <laughs> but like, so Blade, I mean, you can still be as violent we, as possible. We also have the original Blade movies, too. Yeah. I like them. I don't love them. I don't love them, but I like them. Yeah. Mm. I love the new actor they got, Mahasha Ali. It's, um, Too bad he'll be like fucking 80 by the time the movie comes out. So... <laughs> Anyways, Tyler, to leave that out. Yeah. What you got anything to leave off with this? No. No. I think we had a nice little ramble. I think we did. It's this rest stop. It's time to get up, pack our bags, and leave. So until next month, guys, make sure to subscribe, rate, follow into the Geek Verse with Zach Pope. Uh tons of other podcasts. Of course, you got the Hot Mike Gaming podcast where it's me and Phil talking gaming. You got into the Geek Verse where it's just me and a random guest talking about movies, TV games, what's coming out for the month. Flicks and Friends was supposed to start this month. I'm still going to try and shoot something. Um, I can't guarantee it because now we have the wedding and all my plans kind of went down there. Yeah. And then um, me and my wife still have Pope Cinema Circle still in development. Uh, We might shoot it this month. We might not. The wedding kind of caught in the issues of that. And then I also forgot Mother's Day was last weekend. So, all to the mom, all the moms. Shout out to all the moms. Yeah, I forgot. Okay, I got to celebrate my mom this day. We got to celebrate her mom this day. And then it's like you kind of just get exhausted and you want a day off. So, yeah, you got it's definitely a a lot. Yeah. So, other than that, look forward to more on this podcast feed. And of course, until next time, stay classy, keep rambling, and keep having fun. And drink some water. Mm